Welcome back to the OHSU Effect Inside Health and Science. I'm Lacey Evans. Coming up later on the show, we're going to talk about the severity of bullying in schools and how you can help your kids. But first, we're going to talk about our immune systems and why some people have weaker immune systems than others. With me now on KXL is Dr. Ilhelm Masaudi, Assistant Professor at the Vaccine and Gene Therapy Institute at OHSU. Good morning. Good morning, Lacey. So you study the immune system with a specific interest in protecting those who are at higher risk for infectious diseases. So so who are those people? So my research focuses on studying the immune system of older individuals. Um, And as far as Western society is concerned, those are individuals who are at least 65 years of age. Um, And those individuals are exquisitely sensitive to infectious diseases. They remain amongst the leading causes of mortality in this population. Um, And just as an example, if you remember the West Nile virus outbreaks that were occurring between 1999 and 2007, most, um, the biggest risk factor for developing encephalitis or neurological complications was advanced age. So we're really concerned about this population, and it's a growing segment of our population. We really want to protect them. So current vaccines aren't always the answer for people, for older people. Yes. Unfortunately, these vaccines are usually tried in adult populations who are healthy, who have a good immune system. And so even though we have, we've done tremendous advances in vaccine development, and these vaccines are very efficacious for adults, they don't always work in older individuals. One good example of that is the flu vaccine. Even though we have made huge strides in uh, increasing our coverage of flu vaccinations, every year we vaccinate more and more and more individuals. There's still 36,000 individuals who die from flu every year, and 90% of those people are over the age of 65. So we really need to do a better job of trying to formulate vaccines that are specifically targeted for those individuals. Okay, for the lay audience like myself, (laughs) how do vaccines work? Um, So vaccines are essentially either a piece of a bacteria or virus or the bacteria or virus itself that has been either killed or severely impaired. And um, when the immune system of the individual sees this either little piece of, of the bug or this bug that's very handicapped, they generate, the immune system generates a response as if it was seeing the real thing. And so you're not actually getting sick because this this bug is either chopped up or inactivated, but your immune system thinks it's a real threat and generates an immune response. And that's either either our T cells or our antibodies, which are these little molecules that can bind to these bacteria and viruses and, and prevent them from infecting other cells or replicating And so you generate this great immune response, and it can actually last the lifetime of the individual sometimes. Um, And so when you see the real threat, the real deal, your immune system is already primed and ready to go. And so this virus or bacteria never gets a hold of, of the body and never can get to the point where it caused disease. So you also research how women's immune systems kind of change during certain periods of their life. Explain that. Um, so we're really interested in how the loss of uh, ovarian steroids, most uh, specifically estradiol, um, with age during menopause affects immune function in women. There's actually a large body of data that women generate a more robust, a bigger immune response to infection or vaccination than men. And actually, that's believed to be one of the reasons why women are sometimes nine times more at risk for developing autoimmune disease than men. It's because they have this hyper vigilant, super strong immune system. And we want to understand what happens when we lose these hormones uh, with menopause. And we believe that that contributes to the aging of the immune system in women. Do you think women have kind of this hyperactive immune system? Um, Is it because of pregnancy and being fertile and and kind of... Well, actually, that's that's interesting that you would say that. Uh, So during pregnancy, actually, women are in these hypoimmune status because you want to prevent... Uh, rejection of the baby. And so actually, for example, autoimmune disease decreases during pregnancy because you have so much progesterone that actually dampens the immune response. Um, But we're not really sure why women have this this higher um, ability, this bigger ability to respond to infection than men. Actually, in 2009, when we had a shortage of flu vaccine, um, the idea was floated out there that adult women could get half the dose because half the dose in adult women generated the same level of responsiveness as the full dose in adult men. And so if we just gave them half dose, we would have more vaccine to go around. And, and it was a serious idea. It wasn't a joke in, in the scientific community. So uh, we want to understand how sex hormones uh, modulate immune function. Sure. So do you know if, if these immune systems fluctuate in men? Well, very interested in that. There's uh, very little research that's been done on what's called andropause. Um, and it's 
you know, some some scientific circles don't even believe it exists in men. But it's because it doesn't actually have a very specific event associated with it. But levels of testosterone decline with age. And we think that that might also contribute to decreased immune function in older men. Some parents have a lot of concerns about vaccines. What do you say to them? Um, I say to them, um, parents are always trying to protect their kids, right? They buy car seats. They buy door latches. Uh, we cover electrical outlets. And vaccines is just another way to protect your kids. Um, it's it, it, Prevention is better than treatment. And I, I would like to remind them of how many diseases used to kill children in this country, um, like polio, measles, even, even chickenpox used to actually result in hospitalization. And we don't see that anymore. And it's good to remember that we don't see that anymore. And I also want to remind them that vaccinations is not just to protect their kids. It's also to protect people around them. So um, individuals who can't get a vaccine because um, their immune system is weak. So people who are going through chemotherapy or radiation or our grandparents who are older. Sometimes vaccines are not efficacious in them or they can't even get the vaccine. And so actually vaccinating ourselves and our kids can protect those people, too. What is OHSU doing to improve vaccines? Uh, we're making some amazing progress, actually. So there's a lot of laboratories at OHSU who are studying, like me, how the immune system changes with age. What can we do to reverse or delay or prevent some of the changes from occurring? There's also several labs who are working on generating new formulations of the vaccines that are completely inactivated, but very efficacious at the same time. So they'd be great for infants or older people. And um, there are several researchers at the Vaccine and Gene Therapy Institute who have made some tremendous strides in potentially coming up with the with an AIDS vaccine. So we're, we're doing we're doing a lot of great work. Yeah, that's great. And what else are you currently studying? Um, so I'm I am currently studying uh, shingles. So I don't know if anybody knows what shingles is, but it's the reactivation of the virus that causes chickenpox. So when we had chickenpox when we were kids, this virus actually remains um, hiding in our central nervous system. And when we get older, this virus reactivates and causes shingles and it's this blistering rash. It's quite debilitating um, in older folks. And so, again, in line with my interest in aging of the immune system, we're trying to understand why this virus reactivates in older individuals and how we can make the current vaccine better and more uh, appropriate for that age group. So it sounds like you guys are covering everybody from kids up to the oldest people in our population. Well, yeah, because those are our vulnerable populations. Those are the, in, again, to just bring flu back into the picture. So I said there's about 36,000 people who die from flu every year, and 10% of those are infants under the age of one, and 90% are older individuals. So we want to make sure that we take care of our most vulnerable uh, populations. Dr. Ilhelm Masaudi, thank you so much. Thank you.